Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. South African Mining Minister Susan Shabangu opened the new 1.2 billion rand ration-backed black-controlled United Manganese of Kalahari manganese operation in the Northern Cape this week. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer is in the studio to tell us more. Welcome Martin. Thanks Shannon. Now what sort of mining potential will UMK hold for the region in general and the country in particular? Um, you know, the United Manganese of Kalahari is the newcomer. The thing that's different about the newcomer is that it's mining on surface. That equates to being safer and lower cost. Traditionally, there's been underground operations there and all the neighbors are underground. This uh, Russian-backed uh, and black-controlled with 51% um, black control um, <coughs> has had the advantage of virtual outcropping. <laughs> I don't know how they being a latecomer, how they got hold of this, but it's meant that they almost be able to fund uh, the mine as they're building it. Because, um, you know, with uh, manganese so close to surface, you can get it across to market and get some money, you get a revenue stream fast, and that can pay for the infrastructure you're building. The Russians we're talking about are Renova, and um, <coughs> they have a fairly strong executive team here with quite a lot of technical expertise. So they're looking for something big there because, you know, not only are, the, are they saying to Transnet we need rail, but I think they'll soon be saying to uh, the government we need energy because they look like a new breed of miners who are anxious to beneficiate as well. So they've got um, trans alloys in Whitbank and uh, they've already been selling some of the, um, the manganese from the mine, you know, to the trans alloys smelting plant to add value and create ferromanganese and, and this is just what South Africa is looking for at the moment. So it's quite interesting. But the biggest story and, and the one that Susan Shubangu lamented is that South Africa is sitting on the world's richest known and largest deposit of manganese. We've got 80% of the world's known resources and only 15% of the world market. So who is to blame here? Is it the private sector? The miners seem to be able to mine, get more metal out. But one of the, I suppose the private sector has been a little bit slow, but what about government with that rail? You know, you, you need a proper rail. If, you, if you're a thousand kilometers from the market, you need that rail. Now the government calls out for jobs, you know. Let's give some substance to that. If you're going to run the rail, do it properly. Otherwise, get out of the kitchen, you know, if it's too hot. Mm. Because most of these companies are saying, we'll put the rail in, we'll put the transits in, just, you know, give us a decision. And, and that's the sort of thing we need, because this could be a very strong hub. You know, I think I uh, cast my mind back to Chrome. You know, 10 to 15 years ago, the Chrome miners were very confident because they could see the outlook for the demand for stainless steel. So they didn't just take raw Chrome and send it out of the country. They actually beneficiated it. They added value. They lifted that value, sometimes between five and ten times, with ferrochrome. And then they exported the ferrochrome. Today, if you dare export raw chrome, there's an outcry and say, how can you, you know, do this? Uh, you know, you're selling the family silver. You're not creating the jobs. You're not beneficiating. But of course, beneficiation needs energy. Again, who's to blame for this situation? The state. Mm. So, you know, Jacob Zuma calls out for jobs. Who is not creating the wealth so that the jobs are not created? The state. Mm. They must look at themselves in the mirror, you know, start doing something. Either let the private sector do it or do it in partnership with the private sector. But don't come piously saying we're going to create jobs. Where is the wealth from which you're going to create these jobs? or you're going to create the jobs artificially and, and then load the taxpayer to such an extent that the whole country starts sinking. No. Do your job. You're in charge of energy. Put that energy in. Mm -hmm. Don't start preaching beneficiation if you haven't got energy. You, you want an export-led growth? Give us the rail and the port. You know, and, and this, you know, I think the honeymoon is over. You know. Don't talk so piously about things when you haven't even thought them out. Mm -hmm. you know. So something must happen. And you know, Minister Susan Shabangu is a very wise voice in this. And I mean, she knows this. She's pushing the cabinet. She's hoping for some sort of cabinet cooperation where there can be private sector participation 
proper one, uh, private sector participation in energy and in logistics so that we can get this wealth creation going because she has a vision for you know, a very big um, growth hub in the Northern Cape, which needs this sort of thing from manganese because we're in the same position as, as Chrome. We now look out and we see that the demand for steel looks very strong on an ongoing basis you know, for the next 10 to 15 years. The demand, it looks like it w might more than double you know, for, for, for steel. Now against that background, you can, as an investor, become confident to invest in not only manganese, but adding value to that manganese in the same way as they did with the chrome, so that we might you know, cry out to heaven if they just export that manganese ore uh, without some beneficiation creating ferromanganese, silicon manganese, all the other things that you can do to add the value. So we add a bit of a crossroads there, and uh, I hope uh, Minister Susan Shabangu, who's got her heart and head in the right place, can push the cabinet and, and the country in the right direction. Now, you've mentioned jobs, and this particular mine already employs 800 people. Are there plans for them to expand and therefore create that employment? Look, they've got an appetite. The, the, the Russians, I was quite impressed with Renova. I was quite impressed with the level of executive that you've got there. I was also quite impressed with the way they want, you know, the black community and the black uh, investor to have control, mm. you know, 51% of the operation. They are keen on giving the technical input and the marketing input and, you know, <coughs> being part of the team. So it's, it's quite a good approach uh, that I, I saw there. And I think that uh, with the... Um, I also on the B word beneficiation. That's also good. So it's a, like a new breed of miner coming through. Hopefully, at the moment they're moderate. You know, I mean it's small compared mm -hmm. to next door is Mama Twan and uh, close by is vessels owned by BHV Billiton and um, Anglo American with Samancor. But the manganese mining story is South Africa's saddest mining story. You know, we've really not come to the party here and. Um, that's why you know you, you saw a top executive like Peter Bevan from BHP Bulletin just throw in the towel and go, you know, he's in Chile at the moment because copper is far more urgent for the group. And although manganese is a great uh, story, it's not being turned to proper account. And it could be. And there's mm -hmm. still a chance to do it. So hopefully uh, they will do that. But if they do, you know, jobs will come out of that wealth creation. And it's not only direct jobs, you know, it's indirect jobs you create that sort of activity in that area and you have massive spin-off. Now the Russians are backing this mine. Are there any um, sort of opportunities that they're looking at throughout the rest of South Africa? They want to do more mining. They want to get more uh, you know, mining rights. Uh, they won't specify exactly what. <coughs> but they're also very keen on the energy side of things. Mm -hmm. Now th they are wanting to put in possibly a solar farm because I mean when you go to the Kalahari, you know, you, you realize, well, they called this town hot as hell. <laughs> you realize why they gave it that name. Mm. Um, and, and even the Kalahari sands are a problem. You know, our buses were wheel spinning <laughs> in the sands because they're so soft. We had to all jump out the bus, you know, sort of broke down a few times because of those Kalahari sands. So it's hot out there. Mm. <coughs> and the Russians spotting this coming from a very cold climate. Mm. They're saying, brother, you know, we want to put up a solar farm here. And they're talking about 250 megawatts. And they were quite keen on uh, harnessing the sun because they've also got um, association with another company, part of the group, that they make this uh, thin film solar paneling, which mm. is the modern way of uh, you know, uh, making solar paneling. So they're keen on putting those two together in South Africa. and. I think they've got an appetite for more investment. Now, what do you think the future outlook is for this particular opportunity? You know, <coughs> this opportunity, South Africans need to grab it with both hands. Yeah, we've got some of the biggest players in the, in the world. You know, you know, we've got BHP Bulletin. It's got money coming out of its ears, you know. You know, you could say to BHP Bulletin, hey, you know, we've got a vision for this place. Can you help us realize it? They've got the money to do it. I mean, these guys, they own railway lines. Elsewhere, they operate ports. I mean, you know, you have to give them the go-ahead as a partner, provided you give them a proper legal framework that, that is sustainable, that is secure, and you give them security of tenure. They will work wonders for you, you know. And their partner is Angler. <laughs> you know, Angler wanting to get deeper into iron ore. Well, who's the cousin of iron ore? Manganese. You know, yeah, they could do it. They only own, uh, I think, 40% um, of the, that, that uh, joint venture with Samancor, but... 
between the two of them, BHP Bulletin, you know, they could uh, they could do a lot in that area. And I know that they, they are keen to go to the government and present. You know, they're talking about 30,000 jobs in the area. They're talking about a whole town being built there. You know, so people have got great visions. But what do we get from the government? You know, mm -hmm. we don't get this response. It's like hitting your head against a cushion. You know, when do they actually come to the party? When do they take a firm decision? Decision, man. Do, you know, make some decisions. That's what I'd like to see. Well, I hope those decisions come soon. Thank I you, I hope Martin. so, too. It's a great pleasure, Shannon. That's the show for today. Join us again next time for more news and insights into what's happening in the mining world. For 30 years, Crema Media's engineering news has delivered unmatched insight into South Africa's real economy. Subscribe now and go to engineeringnews.co.za for the real economy in real time. Engineering news, not just for engineers.